From the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina, this is the Cloudcast with Aaron Delp and Brian Bracely, presented by a Cloud Guru, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to the Cloudcast. We are coming to you live from the massive studios here in Raleigh, North Carolina. You know, one of the things that a few years ago, Aaron and I really kind of got into, um, there was an announcement of a project. We've always been sort of fascinated by the stuff that, that's come out of Netflix. We've got some friends who work over there. And uh, there was an announcement of something called Spinnaker. And at the time, we we kind of looked into it and we were kind of curious about it. But at the time, it felt like you know it was a very Netflix-centric project. And as we all know, Netflix does amazing stuff, but you know, does it always relate to to other people? And so I think we sort of backburned it for a while and was digging into you know kind of what's going on in the industry and realized there is uh, a Spinnaker Summit coming along. And so I thought, okay, well, if there's a Spinnaker Summit, that means there's a lot of people interested in the topic. There must be a lot of people using the technology. And so I figured I'd go right to the source. And so very excited today to have uh, Andy Glover, who is Director of Delivery Engineering at Netflix, the folks who created Spinnaker. So Andy, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ryan. Um, so first off, uh, you know, give us a little bit of your background. You obviously you're you're with the Netflix team. You work on Spinnaker. You're 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 building and expanding it. But give us a little of your background. Um, you know what you've been working on the last few years, and then kind of where you you intersect with Spinnaker. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, well, I'm I'm actually originally from the East Coast, so uh, it's good to talk with uh, with you. Uh, fellow East Coaster. But yeah, no, I moved out to the West Coast to uh, join Netflix back in 2013. And when I got to Netflix, I took over a team called, uh, it was called the Cloud Interface Tools team. And that team uh, had created a a project called Asgard, which uh, was open sourced and was largely a control, excuse me, was largely a control plane for, for AWS. And it was doing a, a lot of interesting things with respect to you know how people deploy and, and roll back or roll forward, uh, essentially server groups. And uh, there there were a couple of different continuous uh, delivery kind of platforms that other teams were building, uh, leveraging uh, Asgard APIs or their own APIs. And it became clear that Netflix needed. Uh, kind of a centralized one that would uh, leverage all the lessons learned from these other systems. And so we actually began uh, the Spinnaker project uh, shortly thereafter. So yeah, we've been working on Spinnaker now for uh, about four years. Um, Open sourced it uh, about a year after uh, we began working on it. We wanted to uh, battle harden it and test it and make sure everything's good to go and leverage it at Netflix uh, before we uh, we opened up to the rest of the world, but yeah, if you you know Spinnaker itself is is it's uh, it's built on you know on the shoulders of giants so to speak with uh, uh, leveraging you know many many lessons learned from previous systems, yeah, uh, and, and and embodying them in you know in one system that essentially managed so other teams could go back and and ultimately focus on their core charter whether it be to you know make a beautiful iPad experience or whatever it is uh, they didn't necessarily have to worry about the uh, the nuts and bolts or the drudgery of, you know, how do I deliver this thing reliably, confidently and safely? Right, right. Yeah. And I know, I know we had talked to, to Jeremy, who I think had worked on, on Asgard years ago. We, we bumped into a different yeah. place, but uh, yeah, Jedberg. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, you know, and we've always been very impressed with the Netflix team about, you know, they're not afraid to say, look, that was our last generation thing. And we didn't just sort of improve it, but we, we realized we needed to take a very different approach to, you know, how you've grown and how the industry's grown and what's, what's happened. So um, I, I want to dig into that to some extent. So for anybody who, who isn't familiar with Spinnaker, um, you know, I know when it first sort of came out, people could try and compare things to other things. And it felt a little bit like, you know, kind of a CI CD type of tool or something, but mm-hmm. can you give people kind of the basics or, you know, what are the capabilities of it and what's, you know, what are some of the core problems it tries to solve? Yeah. Yeah. So we define Spinnaker as a continuous delivery and infrastructure management platform. And the, the core aspect or problem it's, it's trying to solve is how do I move, you know, this asset, whether it be like a binary or a Docker, you know, container, uh, JavaScript file, it doesn't matter. How do I move this thing from, uh, you know, my local environment uh, to 
production or any environment, you know, how, how do I get in front of people essentially as uh, fast as possible, but also as, you know, as reliably, safely, uh, securely as possible. Uh, if, you know, taking a step back, Netflix, you know, obviously we're a media company and uh, we stream videos. Uh, the, the barrier to entry to streaming a video is, is actually quite low. Uh, any of us can do it. Uh, what differentiates us is data and our ability to act on it quickly. And right. so, you know, at the, at the heart of Netflix, you know, we, we want to move fast and make changes, you know, as fast as possible, understand what our members want and, and ultimately please them as fast as possible. And so going back, that's, that's, that is the, 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 the core mission of Spinnaker is to facilitate uh, innovation of the teams uh, across Netflix or anyone who's using the platform. I have this thing. I want to get it into another environment, put it in front of people, uh, and I want to do it quickly, reliably, safely, and all the all the, uh, the buzzwords, so to speak. Right, right. So, so how does it? If, if somebody's looking at this sort of architecturally, you know, you mentioned it's a it's a continuous deployment tool and it's a like an infrastructure deployment tool. Like, how does it interact with, um, you know, maybe you know, is it does it do kind of the typical developer build pipelines like a Jenkins does, or, or how does it interact with, say, like your, you know, your uh, tools that deploy VMs or deploy containers or, yeah. you know, Kubernetes, you know, something along those lines? Where, where are the interaction points? Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's, it's ultimately very uh, complementary. So, for example, you mentioned Jenkins. Um, we'll come back to Kubernetes. So, uh, in many respects, uh, Jenkins is a great uh, continuous integration platform, and that's something that we initially, with Spinnaker, did not solve or set out to solve. So, Spinnaker is essentially uh, a pipeline uh, tool uh, or platform, and so uh, with respect to Jenkins at Netflix, people will ultimately run uh, their their continuous integration job on on Jenkins, and that will then trigger. Uh, a pipeline in Spinnaker, and that pipeline will then, you know, do whatever that team needs to be done to, you know, move that asset uh, into, uh, in our case, AWS. So you mentioned VM. So what Spinnaker does really well is it'll it'll take that uh, the the result of uh, the, the continuous integration job, and in our case, is is a Debian file. Uh, it'll bake it uh, into a traditional VM if indeed that you know they are deploying to a VM. Uh, It'll then deploy that VM into a test environment. Uh, something that Spinnaker does out of the box natively is express a lot of opinions that we've built over the years. And one of those opinions is deployment strategies, whether it be a, a blue-green deployment or uh, a rolling deployment or a rolling blue-green. Uh, incidentally, we call blue-green uh, black at Netflix. So if, if you do look at, Nef at uh, Spinnaker, you may see red-black uh, terminology. Just It's synonymous for blue-green. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, it'll it'll uh, essentially make it so you can take that VM uh, and you know deploy it to any region uh, that you've configured. And then uh, the the other interesting aspect is that because we are a pipeline uh, platform, you can plug in different stages to that pipeline. And so it uh, out of the box, Spinnaker supports stages like running uh, automated canary analysis with Kayenta. Or uh, in, in Netflix's case, we have a, a number of custom pipelines. You can run, um, you know, some CHAP, which is our uh, chaos application, you know, testing platform, or squeeze test. It, any number of, of of ultimately stages you can you can run as a part of your delivery process. Validate, you know, that in this case the VM is is running as you expect it in this test environment, and then you can promote it into production. Uh, and I think. You mentioned Kubernetes. Uh, so the beauty of Spinnaker is that we built this thing out of the box to be pluggable. Uh, earlier, I mentioned it, it can take any asset, whether it be a VM or a Docker container or a, you know, a, a JavaScript file, doesn't matter. Uh, it, but it also can take that asset and put it uh, pretty much anywhere. Uh, in, in this case, at Netflix, we use Spinnaker to deploy uh, VMs to AWS EC2. Uh, we also have our own container cloud, uh, which is called Titus, which is a, a Mesos framework. But we can take, uh, you know, Docker containers and, and, and deploy them across the cloud onto Titus. Uh, we can affect data. Uh, it, we have a platform called Fast Properties, but you can think of it largely as feature flags. And Spinnaker can, you know, take a feature flag and and ultimately, quote unquote, deploy that or deliver it into an environment. And again, going back to the real value is all the things you want to do before you deploy in, in, in terms of validating that you haven't actually broken, you know, production. 
Uh, and so in the case of a feature flag, we can we can deploy it into a region, validate that uh, you know you, you indeed haven't broken Netflix, and then roll it out to the entire globe. Uh, we also support uh, the delivery of libraries. So there are many teams at Netflix that uh, their deliverable to other teams is, is not a service, uh, but a library in support of you know the overall Netflix experience. And so other teams then obviously, you know, embed that library in their service to uh, whatever it is, get subscriber information or something like that. And so those teams use Spinnaker to deliver those libraries into test clusters to validate that, you know, their, their libraries haven't broken, again, uh, other people. And then recently, we added the ability to deliver uh, firmware updates to bare metal servers running in data centers. Uh, Netflix is very well known for running, you know, in AWS, and we are indeed all in, you know, at with the cloud. So when you do sign into Netflix, uh, everything you see in that entire kind of experience is, uh, is is served up to you ultimately from AWS. However, when you press play on, you know, a particular piece of content that you really want to watch, the the actual video itself is not is not streamed to you from AWS, but from a uh, data center closest to your you know physical location right and so we have you know we have we have boxes and data centers all over the world and those boxes are, are ours and we and in fact update them regularly uh not only with content but also the actual firmware they're running which in this case is free bsd sure uh, and so anyways <clears throat> those teams are using excuse me spinnaker to uh update those boxes with uh, with new versions of uh, firmware and, and all the software running on top of it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a, uh, I hope I answered your question. It was probably yeah. long-winded. No, it was, it, like, it, you know. it, no, it was good because I think I, where I always would get confused or I would hear people ask questions about it was they would they would go, well, you know, it, it seems like it, it, it could be, you know, my CI pipeline. It could be this delivery mechanism across sort of, any environment. And it, it kind of feels like it, it does some orchestration of, of the end boxes and people would be like, you know, do I need a Jenkins? Do I need, you know, an IaaS or a, a you know, a Kubernetes or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, I, yeah. and I think there was some, you know, you could, you could stretch it out to where you could go. Yeah, I guess you probably could make it do all of those things. And then there was other times when, when, you know, depending on the, you know, the, the company situation, you would go, you know, uh, if you don't have an environment that looks like, like Netflix, where like literally the developers and, and, and ops are sort of the same team and you want to have distinction of roles and, and, you know, just different things like that. It was like, you know, use it for the thing that you want to. So I think it was it was good for you to walk through like we use it for these things, but also here's where we interact with with other systems. So that was that was very, very helpful. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and in fact, you mentioned Kubernetes and I, and I failed to uh, to bring that back up. Um, so. Uh, Spinnaker works really well with Kubernetes. In fact, we see it very complementary. Uh, while Netflix doesn't leverage Kubernetes, uh, plenty of other companies do. Right. Um, and in fact, uh, they're you know Netflix, or I should say, the open source community uh, is very much partnered with Google. There is a you know, there is a Google Spinnaker team that we work very closely with. And they work with the rest of the community as well. Great people, and they have. They have made uh, Spinnaker work, uh, you know, with Kubernetes in a, in a first-class fashion. So, while Kubernetes does have some native kind of deployment uh, strategies, again, the real value of Spinnaker is that it, uh, it, it you have these pipelines, and so yeah. you can you can deploy to you know your test Kubernetes clutter, cl uh, cluster. Uh, you can run a series of tests after you deploy it uh, via Spinnaker, and and you can roll forward, you can roll back, and then you can promote to other environments. Uh, and, and again, the beauty of Spinnaker is, is that, uh, as I, you know, Netflix has multiple environments and I suspect, and, and, and know that other companies also have multiple environments. So, uh, while I suspect, you know, Kubernetes is, is growing uh, its footprint, so to speak within, you know, enterprises, there are still data centers and, and potentially still VMs running, you know, in various clouds and the ability to deploy, and then manage uh, assets in those uh, via one control plane, I think, is, is a real win. Right, right. Um, I, I'm going to use that as sort of a, a bouncing off point to talk about, uh, you know, we, we, you talked about what Netflix has done and some of the history with, with Netflix. Um, but obviously, the Spinnaker community is has grown. Um, yeah. can, can you give us a sense of, especially with, with Spinnaker Summit coming up, like, give us a sense of kind of where it's gone 
outside of the, of the Netflix domain. So you mentioned, you know, Google's working on integrating it with Kubernetes, but like, what are some of the other, you know, innovations people have been adding or things that people have done in, in other industries that um, have been sort of interesting to, to watch evolve? Yeah, well, I, and I'll start with Google. Uh, you know, I, I can't, uh, you know, under understate uh, some of the cool things they've done. So we, we actually partnered with Google early on. Uh, in fact, before we open source Spinnaker, we had begun talking to Google. And so they've added, you know, not only Kubernetes, but obviously GCP, uh, you know, or the compute aspect of, of, of you know, Google Cloud uh, is supported in Spinnaker, but so is App Engine. Uh, and, 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 they, and they've done just amazing things around the whole core of Spinnaker. But not only Google, but uh, early on, Microsoft added uh, Azure support. So you can, you can deploy VMs to Azure. Uh, Oracle got involved, and you can deploy, uh, you know, VMs uh, to, you know, uh, Oracle Cloud, uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry. They got involved, or I should say, Pivotal got involved, and so you can deploy things to Cloud Foundry. Um, a company called uh, Cerner. Uh, they're based in the in the Midwest. They are a health informatics company. Right. right. Uh, yeah, they they added support for uh, DCOS, Mesosphere DCOS, uh, and uh, oh. Uh, Veritas and uh, Target uh, added support for OpenStack, and so you know that. And I'm probably missing a provider here or there. I mean, there's there's it's a, it's a, a gigantic community. Uh, there's there's people adding you know uh, uh, cloud providers or endpoints, but then there are people adding uh, new stages. Uh, there's a there's a company in Europe called Shipstead. Uh, a couple of uh, hilarious people, uh, really, you know, fun developers to be around when they when they come out to the U.S. But they committed uh, a number of changes. But you know, case in point, one particular one I'm aware of that Netflix uses quite heavily is is a webhook stage, which is uh, you know, you, it's like you know the, the the workhorse stage for you know plenty of integrations or customizations within Spinnaker, uh, and I suspect many in the open source community. Uh, uh, leverage that stage. So yeah, and, th- and they committed that. Th- the list goes on. Google added a, a, a framework or a service called Fiat, which uh, facilitates uh, you know off N and off Z, which you know amusingly enough, uh, if you're familiar with you know the as you talk to Jed Berg and you know you're familiar with other Netflix uh, individuals, uh, Netflix has a very uh, or at least had a very kind of uh, open environment in that and still does uh anyone can do anything so to speak you know all developers have root right uh and so with spinnaker out of the box when we built it we did not add you know authentication and authorization features into it uh because why would we you know if you're at netflix you can you can you know jump on spinnaker and you could delete you know uh a production asg that you don't own but uh, of course you know that would be a very bad idea but we're not gonna stop you from doing it right uh and so google added fiat which uh layers in you know authorization and then often or uh, excuse me authentication and then authorization and now we're actually using that uh because it turns out that uh you know netflix does uh collect uh, money from you know from people right uh on a, on a monthly basis not much but we do collect it and uh so we do have a you know pci compliant environment and uh, we very much can leverage uh, you know, fiat to uh, enable uh, you know people, or I should say, disable people from going into that environment and doing bad things. Right, right. Um, so, you know, the the, the events coming up. Um, the what are what are some of the things? Obviously, you know, you're you're speaking. There's a whole bunch of people from, like you mentioned, a lot of different companies. But like, what's the you know every every show tends to have kind of like a couple of high level themes or like, this is going to be the talk of, you know, this is the, this is the thing everyone's going to be talking about. What's, what is that thing yeah. going to be here in October? Like, what's the big thing? Everyone's like, man, you know, th- this one's going to be this. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the, the exciting thing for this October is that uh, we are going to announce a, uh, a formalized governance policy for Spinnaker. Uh, and for those in the community, this is something people have kind of been looking for in terms of, how is the project managed and run? Because traditionally, it's it's largely been uh, you know uh, essentially Google and Netflix kind of running the show and deciding who can do what and you know how do you get commit privileges? Uh, you know who who gets a seat at the table has has not necessarily been well published, uh, nor has it necessarily been uh, you know fair uh, so to speak or, or 
maybe maybe a better word is inclusive. I suspect there are companies that would like to get involved, but look and see, you know, all these 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 two gigantic heavyweights are doing it. Uh, there's no way we can get a seat at the table. And in fact, we very much want it to be a levy a level uh, playing field. So we are in the process of formalizing a, a governance policy that's very much modeled after uh, the Kubernetes one. And in it, we we are formalizing a steering committee and a technical steering committee who will then, you know, mint uh, different uh, SIGs and also approve, uh, you know, uh, the, the the ladder, so to speak, of, of people becoming reviewers and then becoming committers. And out of the box, we're going to, it'll be uh, staffed with Google and Spinnaker, or excuse me, Google and uh, Netflix uh, engineers. And we are working out uh, probably within the year, then inviting other people within the community to to join the fold. So I think this is very exciting because it's kind of been a, a large question from a, num- a number of large enterprises in terms of how do we reduce risk here? Where's this project going? Right. Uh, how do we know that Netflix isn't going to, you know, bail or close source it? Or I've even heard that people ask, you know, are you guys going to start, you know, requiring licenses? And, 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 and none of those are obviously our end game. Our end game is to build uh, a vibrant community who innovates. And when, you know, when you innovate, we all benefit. Uh, and, and as I mentioned earlier, there's a ton of innovations coming from, you know, around the world. And a lot of those innovations are being leveraged by Netflix and obviously by other companies in the community. So it's a win-win. So formalizing this governance policy, it's our expectation that it'll only enhance uh, and and increase the level of innovation in that now we've clarified how you can you know you can get a seat at the table right right yeah and, and you know there i mean there's been companies out there who you know have built some uh you know built some business and consulting around it people like armory and some others who yeah. we've, we've talked to before so but yeah it's always I, I think there's always a good signal you send to the market um you know and to the broader community when you say hey look we're gonna we're gonna put some formal governance around this we're gonna we're gonna bring in some people that um you know maybe haven't been at the core of it to get some different perspectives so um, definitely a good thing and, and good to see it sort of grow up around, uh, you know, that usually means it's grown up to a point that people are, you know, they, they want to be very comfortable with it. They just sort of want certain other steps to be taken. So that's, that's very, very cool yeah, to see. Exactly. Yeah. And and I would say on the, on the technical side, with respect to the conference, you know, obviously governance is very exciting, but, you know, show me the, you know, show me bits and bytes. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and the two things that people are just, uh, you know, really, really excited about, uh, are both Kubernetes and then, um, Kayenta, which is our uh, automated canal uh, automated canary analysis platform, both those uh, technologies are featured heavily this year. So uh, I know Google has done an incredible amount of uh, rework of the whole Kubernetes provider, which is really exciting. And there's there's a you know a bevy of talks on that. And then we did recently open source uh, Kayenta, which is our you know our, our automated canary analysis platform. And, and the beauty of that is that was, a, again, a strong partnership between Google and Netflix, where we reimagined uh, canary analysis uh, in, in a world where we could, we could innovate together. And so both uh, the data that we use to do a canary is now pluggable. So we came out of the box with you know, Atlas, which is Netflix's telemetry system, but it also supports Prometheus, Stackdriver, and, and Datadog. Yeah, in fact, I believe Armory added the Datadog work, which is really exciting. Uh, and then it also supports pluggable stages, or excuse me, judges. Um, and so there's a number of talks about how to add new uh, data sources or metric sources, how to add new judges. There's an entire workshop on how to take advantage of canary analysis within Spinnaker. Uh, and then, as I already mentioned, there's there's innumerable talks on Kubernetes. Yeah, yeah. But real quick, before we, before we sort of wrap it up and, and we let you get back to... Uh, to helping folks uh, serve movies up and, and watch what they want to see. Um, <laughs> what's uh, what what might be the easiest way if, if somebody's listening to this and they go, oh, you know, I should go check it out. Like, what's the easiest way to, to go find it? Uh, you know, are there are there easy ways to to play with it, test it out, to play it in their yeah. environment, things like that? Yeah. So I, I obviously I would I would start with Spinnaker IO, uh, Spinnaker.io. There's a ton of documentation and, and kind of quick start guides. There's code labs that the uh, the community has added. Uh, AWS has a, a whole quick start uh, tutorial on how to get started on uh, AWS. Um, if you are using Kubernetes, which uh, chances are you are, because everyone almost appears to be, uh, there's even a number of articles on how to get started with Spinnaker and Kubernetes. There's there's no shortage of ways to get started. 
uh, with the platform, there are there are, you know VMs, Docker files uh, you can pull down to get started, uh, and again, even cloud formation templates. Uh, there's a very very healthy community. Uh, you can join the Slack team, uh, and you know if you have questions, you just jump in there and ask them, and anyone around the world uh, will answer it. Uh, so it's 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 uh it's getting easier and easier to get started. So and that and that's and that's exactly what we want because again, the easier you can get started, then the, the quicker you you get to innovate. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So cool. We will get a bunch of those into the show notes for folks that want to find them. And uh, Andy, thank you so much for the time today. This has been good. It, it answered a whole bunch of yeah. questions that I had about it. And uh, best of luck to the Spinnaker community coming up at the event in October, folks. It's out in Seattle. Uh, we'll have uh, deep yep. links in the show notes. Uh, if you're in the area, go take a look at it. But uh, Andy, thanks for being on today, folks. As always, thank yeah. you for listening this week. And uh, we will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to the Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more podcasts, show notes, and everything social media. And visit acloud.guru for all your cloud training needs.